And good evening and welcome to a WATD political forum. It's the race for Plymouth County Commissioner. Three candidates vying for two seats, including incumbent Democrat Greg Hanley, Democrat and former Commissioner Jack Reardon, and Republican Jared Valenzuela. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, gentlemen. I'm moderator Christine James and a Monday Night Talk host Kevin Tachi should be here momentarily. And we also have WATD's Charles Mathewson asking questions. And of course, a big thank you to our media partner, PAC TV, for being here and uh, getting us on the air as well. We always appreciate your professional service and helping us out here. Amy Leonard is timing everything. And for those of you that are new to one of these forums, and I don't know how you could ever miss one because they're very exciting. Uh, <laughs> this is the construction paper. It's colored paper, green, red, yellow. Green means go. go. Red means stop. Yellow means same thing as green for me. Go. Okay, there you go. The Massachusetts <laughs> definition. No, yellow means ten seconds. Okay, so that's what we ask of uh, folks when they answer questions. You have a one minute limit. And uh, if you go over a minute, I give you a little bit of a five count. And then if you talk too much, you get the bell. And after that, you get the mic cut. You know, as we say, put a fork in it, you're done. Don't want to be uh, remiss and not mention Larry Nelson, who's doing our engineering here tonight. Now, the format is simple. We use this all the time. We've asked the candidates to have opening and closing statements prepared. Your opening statement, no longer than two minutes. And your closing statement, no longer than one minute. In between, we ask you all a round of questions, and again, these questions, you have to get to the point, no rambling, the answer, no longer than one minute. Then we get to the lightning round. Those are the yes or no answers or one or two sentences tops, and we will tell you how long we want those answers to be. So we chose the opening and closing order out of our uh, stand-in newsroom koozie just moments ago, and we're going to begin with Greg Hanley, then we're going to go to Jack Reardon, and then we're going to go to Jared Valenzuela, and we will reverse that order at the end. So we say good evening again, welcome, it's the race for Plymouth County Commissioner, and let's begin with an opening statement from Greg Hanley. Thank you, Christine. I want to thank WATD and PAC TV for uh, allowing us to uh, speak tonight to the voters directly. Uh, I want to thank uh, Carlos De Silva and Mike Bradley for running a robust campaign during the primary, focusing, uh, focusing us on the issues that uh, we hope to champion on their behalf um, because I think their concerns were raised um, from their trip around the county and speaking to constituencies. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Valenzuela and Mr. Redden uh, for being here tonight, and I look forward to the debate. Uh, roughly eight years ago, I was elected as county commissioner and started off with about a $64 million deficit in the county, and in that particular year, a $750,000 structural deficit in the uh, budget of that year. Uh, since then, we've been able to work with our legislative uh, friends, and we've uh, reduced that um, debt down to $17 million. Uh, I'm looking for four more years as the county commissioner to retire that debt. I think it uh, would be close, uh, but if we're successful as we've been in the past to reduce that, then I've done my job, and that's how I feel. So I look forward to the debate tonight, and look forward to all the questions, and uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you very much. Again, that was the opening statement from Greg Hanley, and now we're going to go to Jack Reardon for your opening statement. Thank you, Christine. I want to thank ATD for hosting this forum and PAC TV. It's great to be here tonight. I'm Jack Reardon, running for Plymouth County Commissioner, and I have a few proposals for a better government, a better county government. Number one, I believe that the Plymouth County Commissioner should be more transparent and they should video and audio record their meetings. They, it's not, that is not done at this time. It should be done. It's a basic principle of good government. Number two, Plymouth County Commissioner should adopt a code of ethics, and it's a very simple, another good principle of basic good government. Plymouth County elected officials should not take political contributions from people who do business with the county. Number three, non-disclosure agreements and secret lawsuit settlements. When the county is sued and there is a settlement and money is paid, which is the taxpayer money, the public has a right to know and the press has a right to know why, what the county did wrong and why that money was paid. And lastly, aquifers and clean water. Presently in Plymouth County and across southeastern Massachusetts, there is no trans-county entity that deals with clean water. Aquifers do not end at the town line. They do not end at the county line. Appropriate, a great vehicle that's already in existence to deal with this issue is the Plymouth County Commissioners. I believe the county commissioners should take the lead 
as a trans county entity dealing with those. I'd like to share with you a little bit about my background. I grew up in Brockton. I'm a father of two teenage sons. I reside in Marshfield. For the last couple of years, I've been coaching football and on the board of directors of Marshfield Youth Football. I was a former assistant district attorney here in Plymouth County. I served as president of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club for many years, also as president of Pilgrim Advocates, which is an entity providing legal representations to people who are indigent uh, and are facing court challenges. I also, in 2017, I was the recipient of the Massachusetts Bar Association Community Service Award. I was a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy Reserve. I was also, <clears throat> for many years, uh, a youth sports coach in Marshfield. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Jack Reardon. Opening statement, Jared Valenzuela. Thank you, Christine, and thank you to WATD, Christine, James, uh, Kevin Tachi, Charles Matthewson, Amy Leonard, PAC TV, uh, for having us here. Um, congratulations to Mr. Hanley and Mr. Reardon on your primary victories, and I echo uh, your sentiments, Mr. Hanley, regarding Mr. De Silva and Mr. Bradley on their races as well. Uh, my name is Jared Valenzuela, and I'm a candidate for Plymouth County Commissioner. I'm a lifelong Plymouth County resident, graduate of Sacred Heart High School in Kingston, Massasoit Community College in Brockton, and Bridgewater State University, and I currently own my own home in Rockland. My public experience includes service on the Rockland Planning Board as its clerk, the Elementary School Building Committee, Chairman of the Charter Committee. I'm also currently in my fifth term as a Grand Knight of the Rockland Knights of Columbus and was recently elected to the Board of Directors of Reimagine Rockland. Local and county leaders, such as Sheriff Joe McDonald, Tim Cruz, District Attorney, State Representatives Muratori, Gifford, DeCoste, Sullivan, D'Amelia, Mayor and former State Senator Bob Headland, and a whole host of selectmen and other elected officials across Plymouth County have all endorsed my candidacy, and they all have a wide range on opinions on what the role of county government should be. But that being said, they all do agree that I am the right person for the job. I have numerous goals that we will get into tonight, of course, regionalization, grant writing, and collaborating on matters in which the federal government recognizes county over communities, such as flood maps and floodplains. Uh, my goal is to always save towns and communities money, and by virtue of doing that, saving taxpayer money. Um, I have a proven track record of working together with people of all different political stripes and backgrounds, liberal or conservative, young or old, male or female. You're not going to find a single person I have served with who would tell you that it was a displeasure to be on any sort of project with myself, and I'm honored and proud to say that confidently. Uh, and lastly, one of my final goals will be to ensure that Christine James never has to ask her favorite question again, what does county government do? We will work together to collaborate and make county government a relevant and useful tool um, in, uh, in government. Uh, so again, I'm looking forward to a great evening, and thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you very much. That was Jared Valenzuela. And I just want to remind folks that this evening's forum is uh, sponsored by Stuart Painting, encouraging you this fall to take pride in your vote and in your home. Visit StuartPaint.com for special home repair and painting officer offers and to schedule a free estimate. Uh, opening questions for our candidates. Let's start with Charles Mathewson. Let's segue for what Jared just said. What does county government do? Actually, the question is county government uh, go or stay. Why should it stay, Jared? Thank you, Charles. I appreciate the question. I think there's an opportunity right now, and I think the uh, the activities of the commission in the last several years have proven that there's opportunity uh, to be a effective um, vehicle for regionalization, an effective vehicle for fostering collaboration amongst the communities. I believe that the disbursement of the COVID CARES Act money right now is going well, and that's just a, a prime example of what I think county government does right, and why I think Plymouth County. Uh, which is different than the other 13 counties in the Commonwealth, we're at an advantage. Uh, cities and towns in Plymouth County are already receiving a lot of CARES Act relief money uh, that ordinarily may not have been coming down to them just yet from the state. So uh, in my opinion, that's why I think county government should stay. Jack Reardon, why county government? As I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> aquifers and water is a critical issue across southeastern Massachusetts and across our country. There's no entity that exists that deals with the whole county. There's many fine entities in Plymouth County that deal with regional and more local uh, water issues, but we really are in need of a entity that can deal with water issues across the total county. Let me give you an example. If Town A has 30 houses go in and they share the same aquifer as Town B, that affects Town B and their building too. There is no coordination on the county level of what the aquifer can support and supports a in, in terms of development and keeping the aquifers clean. It should stay county government. I think this is a, is become more relevant on the issue, especially of clean water. Plymouth County Commission is an existing vehicle. 
and should be used to preserve clean water. Greg Hanley, you probably think I'm going to ask you the same question. Well, <laughs> I, I actually, I am. Yeah, why county? Well, as these two gentlemen have stated, I mean, the, the county, the image of the county years ago was horrific uh, when we inherited it. And uh, since then, we were able to turn that around. Uh, I think Jared points out that the CARES Act has been a wildly successful uh, program, and it's actually a referendum on county government. Uh, our intention when the, with the CARES Act was to actually lighten the load of the governor on the distribution of funds. His administration has taken on so much, and we wanted to unburden him of the responsibility of distributing $200 million in CARES Act eligibility for Plymouth County. We have an educated workforce. We have people that we know by their first name with, in communities, and we felt we just wanted to chip in, and that's what we did, and that's what people have been raving about since you know, we started the program. Uh, it really is a referendum on county government, and it should move forward onto other things such as uh, water management. We do have the Plymouth County uh, uh, Watershed Association. Uh, go ahead, Christine. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that, but we do have things that can be expanded upon. I have a follow-up, which is, thank you guys. That's kind of what I expected from you. But what should county government be doing, other than we've heard about the aquifer, we've heard about the CARES Act. Um, in general, what should county government uh, be doing? Greg. Well, what we've been doing, we listen to our communities and we find out how can we help you. Um, we've implemented so many programs uh, along the way, but you know, the administrative form of this government that we inherited had uh, debt, and the debt was significant on the legacy costs of the employees of the jail. Every city and town was paying that burden uh, without an, a, a resource. So we went out and petitioned our legislators, and we wrote legislation that forgave that debt through the uh, deeds excise tax. So that debt is no longer on our books as something that cities and towns have to pay for with no service rendered in return. So once we've cleaned, we cleaned that up, we were able to focus on programs that we could actually use to, uh, the money that we would have been spending on that retirement to seed programs like 4-H. Our 4-H program now is expanding wildly. We have one of the only counties that doesn't have an agricultural school. And this past year, we were able to get our kids together and focus on building that program, and we were successful Thank in getting you. money from the state. Jack Redden, you were part of that uh, earlier uh, county commission. What do you see that the, other than water, which you've expounded on, that the county can really do to uh, uh, satisfy its existence to people like uh, Ms. James? You know, I think today with COVID, it's, it's amazing. Um, the county is becoming even more relevant, and let me tell you why. We have... Um, large shortfalls in budgets across the city and towns of Plymouth County due to a myriad of reasons. A lot of the towns are waiting to see what the state does on reimbursement, what the federal government does on reimbursement. They may very soon we're going to know what the answer to that is, depending on the federal uh, funding and the state of the state and the state, state aid to the local cities and towns. This may be the time that we have to really take a real good look at such services which the city and towns perform, whether it be sending out tax bills. Why do we need every single town has its own department that sends out tax bills? Can the county perform that on a regional basis and save the town's money? And look at the other services that they're performing that maybe on a aggregated look at these services, not just the tax bills, that we can perform them in a cost-saving manner for the towns. Jared Benholzola, if you uh, win a seat in this sports car, what would you uh, do with it? Where would you drive? Well, I would absolutely drive towards a lot of what Mr. Reardon and Mr. Hanley just said, um, continuing to work with the communities and our legislative delegation to uh, begin collaborating and ending what could be a lot of repetitive services that the county could help in regionalizing. Uh, of course, you can't get that on board without getting the towns on board. And, and one of the things I've made a point of doing throughout this entire campaign myself is building relationships with selectmen um, and, and, and counselors across 
uh, the, co the towns in the city of Brockton uh, to be prepared on day one to begin fostering that type of collaboration. But there are a myriad of other things, Mr. Reardon mentioned tax collecting, but plowing streets, paving streets. There's a lot of uh, funds that could be available if bid on as a county rather than a community um, right now. And I think that fostering that relationship and getting the towns on board with collaborating on services like that is definitely an effective, is where I would drive county government towards. Let's get to some of the nitty gritty with the county commissioners with this job. Does this job pay anything? And if it does, how much does it does it pay per year? Greg Hanley. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't even know what it pays. It, it's somewhere in the, in the mid-20s. 28,000. Um, 28, when I first started, it was down to $7,500. Mm -hmm. uh, previous to that, it was around $32,000. Mm -hmm. And it was taken away uh, for whatever reason, I think. Uh, Actually, Chairman Pilato was the chairman of advisory and made a motion to cut the uh, commissioners paid at zero, but the statute requires a, a minimum of 7,500, so that was restored. Uh, I think those were tough fiscal times. I think they were different times. Um, we have slowly but surely restored the faith of government uh, in the last eight years uh, to the point where our advisory committee, who actually votes on whether or not we get a raise or not, um, does it. Um, so this job is becoming more full-time, even so more so now because of COVID, and the amount of work we have to do, the amount of travel we have to do, the amount of explanation we have to do, and then try to sprinkle that in with a 4-H program, and we're working on a veterans initiative right now with the city of Brockton. So there's, there's a lot to it. Okay. Jared, it's $28,000 a year. Do you plan on taking that salary if you get elected? I do. Okay. Are there any other benefits that go with the job? Uh, to be honest with you, Christine, I'm not sure if there are any other benefits aside what might be afforded to mm -hmm. other elected positions within government. And, um, how, and how much time would you have to be able to don to give to this job every week if you're already employed full time? Yeah, I would absolutely be able to give every spare minute that I have, which would be, I think, as Commissioner Hanley just said, pretty close to full time. I don't, uh, I don't jump into anything, and I think all the the boards and commissions I'm a part of now can attest to the fact that when I'm elected to something and when I'm asked to serve in something, I give it 1,000 percent, and nobody has ever felt like I haven't given my full time and attention uh, to the projects and boards and commissions that I've served on. So I fully intend and have the time to 1,000 percent commit to being uh, a full time Plymouth County Commissioner. Okay. And Jack Reardon, do you remember when you were on the board? How much sure. time? How much time sure. a week would you say you spent well, as a county commissioner? I'd like to answer that question. But I would like to also, in a roundabout way, about the salary, just a yeah. correction, the personal knowledge. I have some personal knowledge about that. Okay. Hearsay. The truth is the, the, but the way it works is the county commissioners wrap the budget. They present it to the advisory board. They, they mm -hmm. approve it. At the time, we were faced with some really big layoffs of people that require they, their salary was $30,000 a year working at the registry. I made the proposal to cut our own salary. I submitted it to the advisory board. Pallotta went along with it. It was initiative and leadership to take as management the hit first before the rank and file person mm -hmm. took the took the hit. And last time I was here, I pulled out of the paper the only the the uh, old colony accurately reported my motion at the time. So that's the facts of how that happened. Okay. As as to the salary of the Plymouth County Commissioners, um, I think it's outrageous. I think it's unbelievable that they hardly ever meet, they don't document their meetings, they're never down there at all, and they're making this 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 money. Selectmen serve in, in, in the town governments in Plymouth County, and they spend an inordinate amount of time helping their city, their towns. Um, to answer your question, I just think it's outrageous that they've continually increased their salary. Okay, let me ask you a follow-up question. Then, would you, if you get elected again, are you going to take the salary? And do you know, are there any benefits that go with this job? Um, I mean, health insurance, I, anything like that? To my understanding, at this time, health pension, insurance, health health insurance goes with it, and pension goes with it, and. Uh, for the, the money, the health insurance, and the, and the pension of the, th the three components of mm -hmm. it. I would make a proposal, just like I would make a proposal for Code of Ethics, that uh, it, the salary would be cut down to the statutory minimum. Okay. Let me just follow up you with Greg Hanley. Jack Rudin says you guys are never there. Do you think that's yeah. accurate? <laughs> well, I don't know if Jack's following me around, but I get up at 6, and I just finished my last Zoom meeting at 641 today, primarily on all county business. So... You know, I do have a full-time job, and I, I cheated my employer, to be honest with you, today. Uh, thank God I've had 30 years in the industry that I'm in, and I'm able to work within my own means to do what I have to do to satisfy that employer's request. But, 
to be honest with you, I have their faith in me. Um, it, what, what bothers me is that, you know, someone who actually was making more money uh, at the time he was a commissioner, which he fails to mention in his opening, by the way. He's been a county commissioner for 12 years. I've been, this is my fourth forum. And in every introduction, there is never a conversation about having been a, a previous county commissioner. So for him to say that we, he finds it unconscionable that we take a paycheck, your last paycheck before you proposed your pay cut was higher than the paycheck that I'm receiving now 10 years ago. Okay, when you so, say he or him, you're talking about Jack Reardon? Yeah, and I hate to say that, okay. but I have to correct okay. the record. Okay, 30-second comment. This one. Yeah. Hey, there's two other commissioners. I was always for the proposal to cut it. Didn't have the votes until later. I was my position then is the same position now. Okay. Let me ask you if one, the one more. the I'll move to cut it. Let me ask you one more question about the ins and outs of this job. Jared, why do you think so many people want to be a county commissioner? Can, can, this, can being a county commissioner, can you put people in jobs in, in your place? Can you get people jobs? I mean, in all honesty, it's not something I've thought about because that's not how I operate, Christine. Um, I think being a county commissioner for me um, would be an honor because it's a, it's a prestigious position. It's countywide. It's 27 communities. It's being able to serve as a, a whole lot of, 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 of people. And frankly, um, my public service has always been trying to serve the most amount of people I can uh, as effectively as I can. Uh, in, in doing so in an open and honest and transparent way. So uh, I, I, it's not something I've thought about. It's not something I usually think about. And, uh, and again, I'm running for county commissioner because I, I do believe that it's a prestigious, posi prestigious position uh, that can absolutely uh, offer the most amount of good and benefits for the communities and the residents of Plymouth County. Okay. Charles Matthews, any questions for the candidates? Let's get into some more specifics about the budget. Uh, the county dredge has been widely criticized uh, to narrow down Christine's favorite question, the county dredge, stay or go? Jack Ridden. Um, I'd like to know if they funded it for this, this term, but it should definitely go. During the last campaign season, season, I've appeared before many different forums, and other people running for county commissioner went out and said there was a successful dredge program for the county. In reality, at the same time when they were saying this, there was an existing Inspector General's report. And we know there was never a county dredge. There was a excavator. There was never a any type of facility or any type of flotation device to put it on to make it a dredge. There was never a county dredge. It's a excavator. When Hingham needed a dredge, they went to the private sector. They wanted nothing to do with the county due to the bad relationship with the county. Hey, great idea, but there was never any business plan for it. There was no forethought on having a county quote, dredge. It was, I agree with the Inspector General, it was a total mismanagement of the Plymouth County funds and the taxpayer funds. And when it was used, the law requires the Plymouth County Commissioners to use the funds of Plymouth County for the benefit of the denizens of Plymouth County, and they used it for Falmouth and, Ch and Chatham, which is totally illegal. Thank you. Eric Bradley's building. County dredge, stay or go. Yeah, well, I mean, my understanding is we have the equipment anyway, so I guess it's going to stay. But, um, you know, as, as Ms. Reardon said, that there apparently isn't the staff for it, and some towns have expressed uh, the need, but it's it's not a hydraulic type dredge. It's it's more or less a backhoe with an extension. Um, so to that end, to that end, Charles, I think again, it's about taking what's in place with county government and seeing if we can take it to the next level. Uh, once in, I fully expect, and I've already been looking into it, but fully um, working on trying to see what we can do with this program. I think it, it can offer a benefit to especially inland communities that aren't used to the idea of coastal dredging. When I worked for former Senator Hedlund, that was something that would come up quite often. Uh, and I think it's a benefit that can uh, be expanded upon should we uh, be able to get the support, the funding, uh, and the other means necessary to make it a successful program for Plymouth County. Jack Emily, I know you are uh, strongly opposed to the dredge program. Strongly opposed. Well. I, I inherited a, a dredge. Uh, each of us as commissioners take on our own projects, as you know. Uh, I, and when I first came in, I dealt with trash and solar. I'm dealing with 4-H. You know, each commissioner has uh, their own niche. So this was a project that Sandra Wright um, inherited. And I say that because- Initiated. Initiated. Well, she, she signed on to a request from three state representatives in coastal communities that needed a friendly agency to land a dredge. 
and we were promised monies to uh, after the initial application to grow it. And two of those three representatives left office, and we were left with a dredge that needed to be housed. So we reached out to the town of Kingston and said, listen, we have this dredge. There is not one community that has a shovel-ready Army Corps of Engineers permit. So it was well thought out, but it wasn't well executed. Uh, since then, we had to turn around on a dime and make something of nothing. And so, you know, we've generated a little bit of revenue, but if that dredge was for available for sale tomorrow, I'd sell it. Um, but what can I do? We have it. Until we do that, we make a decision. Um, I think Frank Basler, our administrator, has done a fantastic job. Sandra Wright has done a, a fantastic job because it was her reputation on the line that because she initiated. But if we had the subsequent funding that we were supposed to get, that would be a success because it was patented after the Bonstable uh, experience. But Bonstable has a different source of funding than we do. We couldn't successfully go out and get money uh, subsequently from the legislature because it wasn't a priority of this. And as we know, the county doesn't make much revenue to fund programs that aren't already existing. So it was a, a good attempt. Um, I'm not going to candy coat it. Oh, go ahead. I'll, Sorry, I'll let I you was, go. But I'll, I'm, I was I'm listening to your explanation. more than willing to talk about it. I'm well, more than willing to talk let about the IG can, report. Do you mind if I jump in here? How much did, did the county spend on how, how much did it cost for the dredge? Over two hundred thousand. I want to say it was, it was like two fifty. Okay, um, and it's grant money. Involved. Yeah, it was one hundred percent grant money. What was any project ever done? Yes, we've had at least half a dozen. But can you name? Can you name those? Um, there's a dredge project down in the Falmouth area. They were outside the county, but they were shovel ready projects. And here's the thing: we have the piece of equipment, which is just an excavator, but you need to provide the manpower to operate it. You need to provide the transportation to transport it. And not every community has that. And the ones that needed to, to really address their issues, you, you can do check the record and, and see the response that they said, thank God for Plymouth County's dredge. So, you know, is it something that's going to generate money? No. Is it something that's going to sustain itself? Probably not. But for those folks, we actually tried to give it to the town of Pembroke in the Fisheries Commission with Billy Bolta. And at the time, it was um, Ed, Ed, um, Thorns. Ed, Ed Thorn. Thorn. Okay, they discussed it. And they run up against the same things that we did operationally. How do you sustain it without help from a source, either through projects or through the legislature, to give us a full program? It, it was underfunded and, and abandoned, quite frankly. Let me go on the record with you, Greg, that uh, I'm not in the market to buy it. <laughs> Any, any follow-up on the uh, dredging no. here? I think we've we've dredged everything we can out of it. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Just want to remind people you're listening to a political forum here. It's the race for county commissioners. Three candidates, two seats. We've got the incumbent here, Greg Hanley. He's a Democrat. Jack Reardon, former commissioner, also a Democrat running. And Republican, Jared Valenzuela. We're going to take a quick break right now and check in with the folks at Stewart Painting. They're the sponsor of tonight's event, and they want to encourage you this fall to take pride in your vote and your special home repair and painting office offers and to schedule a free estimate. We'll be back right after this. Oh, thank you very much. And I am your moderator, Christine James. We're back in studio asking the three candidates for county commissioner their thoughts and views on the county and more. Um, I want to ask a couple of questions now. Jared, here's a question you knew I was going to ask you tonight. You had a pretty good job with the state. You got fired. What happened? Yeah, well, you know, Christine, unfortunately, um, you know, I, I had a good job. It, it is uh, ancient history. It was a while ago. Um, a lot of people have lost their job before, some with cause, some without, uh, and I had made some mistakes, but since that time, I've managed to find a new job, which I'm successful at, re-elected to the planning board, unanim unanimously appointed by two different boards of selectmen to both the elementary school building committee and the charter committee, uh, the latter of which elected me their chairman, re-elected every consecutive year. As Grand Knight of the Rockland Knights of Columbus, unanimously elected national committee man for the Massachusetts Young Republicans, and unanimously elected to the reimagined Rockland uh, board of Directors. Uh, in all of those roles and in every other role I've ever had, I've served with dignity and, and I've made lifelong friends that I cherish to this day who would all, uh, almost in, in line and in unison, uh, vouch for my 
trustworthiness, my honesty, and, and my, okay. my openness. That sounds like a very good commercial for you. Tell me what you were accused of. Tell me what happened. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, it was stated that I had misrepresented my role to a uh, employee that at the time had worked in another agency. Uh, it was investigated. Uh, the investigation had deemed uh, that that may have happened. Uh, unfortunately, during that investigation, uh, some other information had come out. Um, through my collective bargaining uh, agreement, uh, I was in the uh, National Association of Government Employees. Uh, several months later, about 18 months later, we settled with the state in which the Commonwealth uh, acknowledged uh, removal of those records from my permanent record, uh, and they rescinded my termination and changed it to a, uh, a um, resignation. So uh, the official record on the state, if you called uh, tomorrow looking for a reference, the official record would reflect that I resigned my position with the Commonwealth. Okay, so there's no non-disclosure, nothing like that? Okay, so, be, so somebody who had accused you, I guess, of trying to influence somebody not to run for an office, that's not accurate? No, uh, in my opinion, it was not. Uh, the individual was a friend of mine. Um, we had met for coffee. Uh, we had talked, as we often do, about things. And uh, and from there, um, I had never once uh, offered or uh, engaged in any uh, undue influence. Frankly, I was a pretty low-level uh, employee with, uh, with that agency, mm -hmm. uh, and she worked in another agency. So I, I had had no um, real or inferred influence over, over her career. Okay. Thank you. Jack Reardon, you were a commissioner for how many years? Was it 12? 12. Did, were you behind the movement to get rid of the county, to disband the county? Did you feel that way? Do you still feel that way? I feel the way today that I felt then, okay? And I answered this many times on the campaign trail. Um, the county government back then was riddled with no-bid contracts, people taking political donations, very ineffi inefficient, archaic form of government. We had many different things under the county um, that shouldn't have been there. We didn't have the ability to do it. And I take the same position then as I take now. If it ever turns out that we can't fix it and it's so corrupt, then we should get rid of it or look at another avenue. Back then, we were able to turn a lot of things around. We were able, we had such good bond rating, we were able to go out and bond the Registry of Deeds, the state-of-the-art Registry of Deeds. When I came into the office, the Registry of Deeds, when it was originally built, didn't even have electricity. And then they had to install it years later. Not when I was there, th it had electricity, but years ago when it was bought, um, built, it didn't even have ele electricity, the Registry of Deeds. We were able to build a new Registry of Deeds, go out to bond, and create a state-of-the-art facility and turn things around. Okay. And Greg Hanley, you've been a commissioner for how many years? But this is eight, my eighth, eighth year. Yeah. How many more? How many more, more years do you think you want to run for this office? Yeah, I tell you, if I can get the debt down to zero, this will be my last one. That's it. Do you re yeah. do you regret anything you've done while you've held that position? Things you would have uh, done differently? Uh, yeah, in hindsight, you know, not you share know, share one of those things with uh, us. I got to be honest. I am so tired because of the day, uh, and it's been a long career. But mm -hmm. you know, I don't regret anything because I think every time we have tried to tackle. Uh, a problem we've we've in earnest tried to tackle it. In some of the problems we've we've tackled, our advisory board didn't agree with. Um, and you know, there's been a change of that group of individuals who uh, seen the success when we're collegial and we cooperate with one another. The good thing about county government is you've got so many people you can work with, and you don't you're not limited to anything. Yeah, but don't you think you guys have screwed up at least one thing? In what way? You, yeah, that's you, what why I don't you to name it and I'll comment okay, on it. Okay, well, what about, we've, okay, we've what about the something. public relations for dealing with the county farm? That was a debacle. But we didn't start it. We didn't. How do you think you handled it? Well, we successfully carved out 18 acres for use for I'm, the 4-H program. You I'm, asked me how we handled yeah, it. Yeah, but I'm talking about the PR part of it. Who, who, how did, honestly, how, did, how do you think the public looked at that? It was between the sheriff and us, okay? And it was just a matter of providing insurance on the property. Okay, we were given guidelines by the state auditor who audited the town of Bonstable or the county of Bonstable and said that you cannot possess land that is uninsured. We did not have a lease on the property, and we knew this for seven years. We tried to negotiate out of the public, okay? But then when it came to the point where we had to actually issue an order of cease and desist on the property for liability reasons, as instructed by the state auditor, Okay, we would be negligent if we didn't pursue it. So we ended up going to mediation. It was all unnecessary, quite frankly. The sheriff is a friend of mine, okay? We 
had differences of opinion that had to be opinionated or decided in court. And they were. And so guess what? We settled the matter. We have 18 acres now of the 100 that were not being used for use in the 4-H program. No. And with respect me, to the one okay, last the, item. Okay, let me, item, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I want to know about the PR part of it. I don't care they, about what, the PR. Okay, so you don't care what the people in Plymouth County I, thought that you I, guys messed it up. Well, they, the people that took the time to be educated and didn't have an agenda were educated. And then when you explain it to them reasonably, they say, wow, that's right. So guess what? Look at what that program is now. We have a 4-H building there, a greenhouse that we built. We have access to the farm. We have cooperation with the sheriff's department with our 4-H program, which never existed. So you're satisfied with the outreach that went on I'm from your side? I'm satisfied with the during, outcome. During. But I what about the, but I, I with wanna, the public? I want to ask you about the outreach. You don't think that they dropped the ball on that? Who? You guys, county we, commissioners. Why would we drop the ball? We didn't drop the ball in any way. We, that was that's a group was of people that started asking you. something that they were not educated to. I'm just telling you from the news side, we never got more calls, emails, yeah, or but complaints. But when your, your reporters came and reported, they reported the truth, the facts. Yeah. So we deal with the facts. Exactly. So guess what? It resolved right. itself into everyone's life. All liking, I'm asking you about Christine. is outreach. You could have done a better job. In what way, Christine? You could have done a better job. In what way? You Tell could me. have you could have had commissioners talk to us directly instead of having your attorney only speak to us. I think you could have made made yourselves more accessible that way for the human touch. I'm just telling you this is this is the way the public perceived it, and then yeah. we tried to cover it as fairly as we could. That's why I wanted to ask you the question. Well, uh, that's okay. your perception. Thank you, Kevin Tachi. Hi, Kevin. Hi, guys. Hi, Kevin. How are we doing? I got here just in the nick of time. Yes, huh? you did. Although, uh, I think the first thing I want to I, I want to ask is, legislatively, what do you feel that you need to do as a governing board once the election is, is done in regards to revenue? Um, I know that it's been said that the state, and it was a question that we had during uh, w one of our recent forums, and I asked a couple of state Senate candidates, candidates about, uh, state representative candidates about going to bat for funding for the county. Um, and it, it seemed kind of lukewarm. Why is that? Why is it so lukewarm to want to get funding for the county and help the county succeed? Jack? I don't know who exactly who you're referring to, but you really look closely at the history of in the last uh, eight, ten years of Plymouth County government. There's been a series of bailouts by the legislature of money. A lot of money, like for the dredge and these other programs, registry of deeds, I mean, the old district attorney's office in Brockton recently. There's been always a series of money coming from the state to the county. And uh, I disagree with that. The county needs to survive on its own. It should not be looking to the state to bail it out with this money. We, you either got to run it appropriately or run it in a business manner. But you should not be looking to the state every time you need some money to do something. But what needs to be done legislatively by your board, by the commission, to be able to get more than 10% of the monies that the state takes from you? That's the, re that's the registry of deeds recording. Actually, when I was there, we changed that also, and we were able to reach a compromise and increase it. And that's been a, and I agree with the, the present commissioners trying to do and continue on what we did, increase the percentage of the recording fee of the, of the registry of deeds. Every time a document's recorded, the percentage is just not favorable to us. It goes to the, it goes, the majority goes to the state. And um, that was a tough battle, but we were able to change it, and it was changed again. So to answer your question, um, that's one way to look at additional revenues for the county is a more fair and impartial distribution of the recording fees at the registry of deeds. To have that go forward, you really need to establish good relations with the county, um, the county elected officials. When I say mean that, the state reps, the state senators. And that, that comes down to uh, just being frank and open and talking to them. And being be completely honest. Thank you. Well, this group of county commissioners has done so many things in cooperation with our legislative delegation. I, I'm, I was trying to think in my head, where do I begin? I mean, let's talk about the rainy day fund. There was never a stabilization fund. That was an act of the legislature that we sought and we got. Uh, there were some statewide issues. We are members of uh, the county commissioners association and we take a lead role on, on what we put forward for the new legislative cycle. 
uh, for things to consider. The reduction, I mean, the addition of the uh, deeds excise, we're at 10 cents. So Dan knows the number, 9.28, whatever, whatever. I say 10%. Um, you know, we, we got it to third reading twice to where we initiated uh, legislation that uh, allowed us to get it up to 42 cents and we were at 10 cents. The compromise in the third reading was 27 cents and it died twice. Uh, we got it all the way there, but how did we do it? We did it with collaboration with the other counties, okay, and the leadership, all right? We went in and actually did a day in the state house where the county sponsored it, invited all the legislators who were willing to come and every single legislator from this Plymouth County attended, and then we had the periphery. We had Norfolk people, et cetera. So, uh, you know, maintenance of effort. Um, you talk about legislation that we, we passed uh, to include. Well, well, we'll go back to it. But what are you going to have to do to get it beyond the third reading? It seems that you've, you've made progress. What, what extra effort? If you're reelected, you comprise We'll, we'll refile the bill. Um, it, certainly, it's a two-year cycle. Yep. So what you try to do yep. is prioritize, and you have to partner. And if you can partner with your delegation, that's great. But when you partner with other counties and the pressure is applied across the legislative spectrum statewide, and you have everyone pushing, that's how you do it. That's how you build the legislation. You build consensus, and that's what we did. You know, I don't – it's it just at the end of the day, there's other priorities that the governor – the Senate President and the uh, Speaker of the House have. So when theirs comes up against ours, sometimes we fall by the side, but we don't give up. We keep refiling. And we, and we compromise. We keep cutting where we have to. We keep or we can add. We can include. There's all sorts of things. And we have such a dynamic group of legislators in Plymouth County. It is fantastic to work with all of them, even the new folks, Catherine Natria, uh, even Senator um, Moran. Moran. <laughs> She's so new, I keep forgetting her name. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's such a, a hard worker, day one. You know, so. Same question, Jerry. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. I think um, one of the things that, that perhaps hurts Plymouth County legislatively, as Commissioner Hanley is mentioning, seven out of the 14 counties don't exist anymore. So quite frankly, there's a lot of legislators who do not see the point of county government, they don't even have county government in the areas of the state that they represent. So that is another hurdle, I think, uh, taking it one step further, and I, I agree with Commissioner Hanley, uh, we have a, a great team of legislators uh, for Plymouth County, uh, but we, I think we need to begin working more with first communicating to the state, to the legislate, legislators, what we do, the things that we're doing, the things that we want to do, and prove to them that this is a worthwhile uh, investment for them to make, because it ultimately it's it's coming out of their bottom line if they re raise our uh, rate, which I think is 0 0.1062 cents to every uh, dollar of deeds excise. Uh, that comes out of their bottom line, so it's ultimately getting them to realize that there's there's good programs that we can do here. Once elected, I'll absolutely also work with the commissioners in Bristol, Norfolk, Barnstable County, Dukes, and Nantucket, uh, as well as the other existing uh, counties to, to prove to the legislators from their delegation that there's good things that county government can do. Kevin, why don't you <coughs> ask another question since you got here late? I know you've got a bunch oh of questions. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Has, has the <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm no. I'm Are you tuckered to... out already? I'm, I'm going no, out. you can oh. ask these three. I, I think the I, I know Christine was asking in regards to relationships. Has the question been asked in regards to your relationship with the town of Plymouth? How, what, is, what is your understanding as to the commissioners and their relationship with the town of Plymouth? Uh, I know it's been a lot, there's been a long, longstanding uh, feud about the, the, the wood lot, not to mention the county fund. That was something that was touched upon. Jared, give me your thoughts. What do you know about the, the relationship between the county commissioners and the town of Plymouth? Yeah, well, I think that's a two-part answer, Kevin, obviously, with the town government. Right. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's obviously the residents of the community, which I think were uh, fairly upset with the, with what happened with the farm last year, and, of course, the woodlot, as you just allude to, as well as the relationship with the actual government. I believe there have been some Plymouth selectmen who have been on the advisory board who have absolutely seen no use for Plymouth County government. Um, that said, I think... Uh, one of the things that's important for us to do is to begin to really, again, communicate what county government can do uh, for these individuals. You know, what happened with the farm last year uh, was partially what motivated me into looking into Ron. I, I think that, um, to Christine's point, you know, the communication was there, but it, it became public uh, in a way that, that perhaps could have been handled in a, in a, in a better way. And, uh, and I think communicating what the need was and, and keeping that perhaps, you know, 
it was transparent, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't, you know, sort of the sausage making of government that doesn't necessarily, um, you know, people like to watch. But, you know, my understanding is it's definitely a, 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 an interesting relationship with the town of Plymouth. And once elected, I absolutely look forward to working with the residents of Plymouth, especially the ones in the woodlot, uh, and the folks that are elected in Plymouth uh, to repair that relationship. Mr. Handley, same question. You, of course, have more, you've had boots on the ground for a while. Is there... Uh, a little bit of a, a void in the relationship between the county commissioners and the town of Plymouth. Is there a good working or, or did, did, did it, does there need to be um, some kind of goodwill between the two to come together and work together? Well, there's certainly a past. In uh, the past that we inherited was a, a dirty landfill and Plymouth County uh, commissioners had to sue the town of Plymouth on behalf of the other 26 communities on the cleanup of that landfill. We had proposed certain uses for that and, and different funding mechanisms to do that. Um, they didn't want to work with us. Uh, they abandoned the use, but we didn't abandon the use. We preserved it by notifying the DEP that that landfill should remain a landfill, and we, and we were successful in doing that. Having said that, it was summary judgment was issued, and um, it, it really comes down to they're responsible for what they're responsible for and what they're not responsible for will be responsible for. So I want to say, without quoting the numbers, it's a 70-30 split, and that it's a 21E problem. The, 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 the capped membrane failed, and you know the judge said, okay, it was, it, it's antiquated. There's a, because you're the landlord, you own a percentage of it, and because you polluted it, you own the other percentage of it. So I'm not, I think it's a 70-30 split. Do you want to ask him a follow-up question? I don't want to take away from Jack's response. Well, let Jack give a response, and if, if, if you need me to ask another question, I, de I definitely can. Jack, what's your understanding of the relationship between the, the commissioners and the town of Plymouth? You know, that's one of the things that motivi motivated me to run. I received an overwhelming amount of calls from people down there, and it's just say it can be improved, the relationship. And I would say the way to approach that is I've always said you have two ears, one mouth. You need to listen. You need, and there needs to be a listening tour. It needs to be some a lot less talking, sitting down with the uh, elected officials and the other people of Plymouth and listening to their concerns. Hopefully with that, the relationship will be able to change, improve for the benefit of all. And how do you do that? You sit down and you, listen. You're, you're, you're sit. already becoming the role of the peacemaker here. How do you do that? Kevin, you're the selectman. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Jack, we had a new, newly elected, hopefully, county commissioner. Um, I understand there's some concerns you have. Um, I have my paper. Start talking. I'd like to hear them all. That's the simplest that way. That easy, huh? Write them down and see what you can do. But listen, less talking, twice as much listening. What's your understanding of the woodlot and the, the situation with that? Um, well, I think that the – I'm not totally up to date on the nuances of the latest issues of the, of the woodlot. Okay. Um, but – my goal that I would like to see with that is that um, going back to water, there's a lot of water quality issues in Plymouth County, and uh, there's an aquifer underneath there, and I think we need to revisit uh, that issue in regards to the woodlot. Well, just as a follow, so I got to mention the, the negative, and why was it so acrimonious? Because we sued you, right? So from that point, which was early on in our uh, group, uh, in the first term, and it was settled in the second term, we've been able to work with the town, like Plymouth 400. We lent all of our resources to them for Plymouth 400. Unfortunately, COVID struck. Uh, take the Thanksgiving Day Parade. We, we allowed them to store um, the uh, floats and devices in the, the abandoned gun range. When there was a catastrophic failure of a water main that it was on county property and they needed emergency access, we granted it. There were bad relationships with representatives of their government, meaning they were electeds, okay? And there was a previous history with my chairman and the manager on non-cooperation. But I'll tell you right now, when we issue that CARES check for $6 million, they're going to be pretty, pretty happy that they partnered with us and they did it in a manner that was collegial and respectful. What's your understanding of the situation, Jared? Oh, my understanding, Kevin, is there's... Um, 
you know, it's about 100 acres, I believe, of, of land that has access now. It was uh, recently, it's been stripped, I think, about 80% of the sand and gravel that's in there. And I know there are some folks that are concerned with it. It's something I've looked at as a member of the Rockland Planning Board and using that experience, uh, you know, again, listening and, and hearing the concerns of abiders being on the planning board. I do that, you know, once a month uh, as a member. Um, it's looking at that parcel of land, making sure there's a preservation component to it, but making sure that if we can develop it, that it does so in a manner that doesn't upset the abutters or the community uh, or the folks that are there. Uh, and as a planning board member in Rockland, I've been doing that for years, and I think that that type of knowledge and, and expertise and capability will be well served on the Plymouth County Commission. Charlie, another question? <clears throat> the follow-up to that, uh, right about now, uh, the Plymouth, town of Plymouth uh, uh, Community Preservation Chairman, Bill Cohan, is uh, addressing the selectmen a few miles to the south about a town meeting article uh, to buy a portion of the wood, of the uh, woodlot from county commissioners. I haven't heard anyone mention that, but about a half of it is proposed to be sold. Now, the county has had a long history of selling its real estate to, uh, as revenue. Uh, is this another attempt to uh, pad the revenue by selling another piece of real estate? Well, let's start with you, Greg, because well, you know. This is the first time I'm hearing of it. I, I can just tell you that the county commissioners have undertaken a process of uh, putting a commission together to examine the site, uh, comprised of advisory members. Um, so Dan Pilar, our chairman, started that process last year, had a series of meetings, and. Uh, that was his initiative, and they have yet to report a finding. Um, I can say we acquired access in two different locations because the land was landlocked and there was no access. We, cho we actually did have access. It was through a neighborhood. I think it was Longwood Ave or Longwood Drive. Tall Pines. Uh, Tall Pines, okay? If we wanted to really go in there and develop that property, we were not going to do it through a uh, community. And we had every right to do it, but why? Why would you do that? So we purchased two access points. The one thing that's unconscionable, though, is the, the gravel situation that was signed by the previous um, commissioners. The amount of gravel that has been taken out of that property, okay, has now under, undervalued the property, number one. It's the value of the property has gone down because of the environmental impact. And I'll be more than glad to talk about um, the initiative to do uh, Preservation. Just let's keep a note on the time here. We're getting around to the end. Do you want to ask the same question? Yes, the Jared. Other yeah, thank you, Charles. I mean, I think, first of all, it's important in my view to note that selling land does not equal revenue, right? If you have a job, you get paid. If you sell your house, you get paid once, and that's not really revenue. So it's sort of the same idea. Um, look, if, if Plymouth wants to have a conversation about purchasing uh, a parcel of that land for, for purposes that they feel they can develop and use better for the town of Plymouth, I'm, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those folks that get completely sold on necessarily having to, to, to always drive the sports car, as you said earlier. Um, and if Plymouth is having that discussion uh, as a community, as a commissioner, I'll be more than happy to sit down with them, discuss with them, and, and, and really get into the nitty-gritty of what they want to use that for. And, and if they want to purchase a per portion of it uh, from us, well, then I'd be have that conversation. I, I don't think the county right now needs to go back to selling land for revenue or selling land to, to make budget and payroll. I don't think it's a necessary thing from my understanding of the current finances of the county. Um, but that said, if there are Plymouth or other communities that have county land in, in their town that they want to reach out to the county and potentially collaborate with or purchase from us, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Thank you, Edmund. Is selling half of the woodlot to Plymouth uh, a step backward for the county? First of all, I want to praise, I heard about that today with Bill Cohane and the, and the conservation um, money to preserve the aquifer and that parcel of land, which my understanding, I had a little ability to look into that's north of the county woodlot, northeast of the county woodlot. So I praise him for doing that. Um, I, I believe that there should be no development on the county woodlot. I would be very happy, I think, and I think the people of the uh, town of Plymouth would be very happy if we preserve that lot with, in conjunction with the town of Plymouth. Okay. We're gonna go to lightning round, then we're gonna go to closing statements. I just wanna go real quickly. Uh, two sentences, what are you interested in besides politics? Jared. Oh, sports and music. Okay, Greg. 
My family and friends. Okay, Jack. My family, skiing with my sons, okay. and reading history books. Thank you. Quick. Favorite place to visit in the county? Jack. Of course, where Lightning. I was born, Brockton. Okay, <laughs> Greg. Brockton. Uh, Plymouth, actually, down on the beach. Okay, Jared. Nantasket Beach. Okay, Charlie, quick. This is a personal question. Um, would you continue to meet at 8 o'clock in the morning, Jared? <laughs> yes or no? Oh, boy. Um, yes or no? No. Okay, Greg, yes, yes or no? I'm okay, sorry, what was the Jack. I didn't hear it. Continue would you to continue eat? to meet at 8 a.m.? Oh, the yes or no? Yeah. Earlier, the better. Okay, oh, but there you the go. problem with that, one question real quick. No, 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 yes access. or no? <laughs> yes or no? Yes or no? That's why I said no, Mr. Okay. Randa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to final uh, statements. We're going to reverse order now and begin with Jared. Remember, it's a minute. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again uh, to WATD, PAC-TV, uh, everybody here uh, for putting on a great evening. Uh, and again, Mr. Hanley and Mr. Reardon, it's, uh, it's been an honor to run with you folks here. Uh, my name again is Jared Valenzuela, and I'm looking forward to earning your vote on November 3rd. I have a track record, know-how, and ability to work together with state, county, and local leaders to foster a new and different approach to county government by building on the previous, previous successes while also looking to future ones. Again, please vote Jared Valenzuela for Plymouth County Commissioner. To learn more, you can check me out on Facebook at Jared Valenzuela for Plymouth County Commissioner or visit www.votevalenzuela.com. Again, thank you, and uh, we'll see you on November 3rd. Thank you very much, Jared Valenzuela. Let's go to Jack Reardon now. Thank you very much. You know, history is a wonderful thing, and I like to read history. And one of those books I came across not too long ago was a book by Sir Edmund Burke, an Irish statesman. And he said, you vote for somebody not because you agree with all their positions, but you vote for somebody because of character. I ask people, don't vote for me only because I grew up in the county. Don't vote for me only because I'm a father, not a politician. Don't vote for me only because I've coached youth football in Marshfield for 10 years. Don't vote for me only because I was on the board of directors of Marshfield Youth Football. Don't vote for me because I'm one of the co-founders and past presidents of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club. Don't vote for me only because of the former assistant district attorney here in the county. Don't vote for me only because I received the Massachusetts Bar Association Community Service Award for the Mochila Project bringing to underprivileged children living below the poverty line, coats and jackets. But vote for me because all these life experiences together equal character. Thank you, Jack Reardon. Now let's go to Greg Hanley, closing statement. I have a, a closing statement that I wanna first preface by a, a post that I put on about, uh, uh, if I can, if you'll bear with me for two seconds here. You got one minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a true professional, you will do something outside yourself, something to repair tears in your community, something to make life a little better for people, for, <laughs> of course I should have put those glasses on first, for less fortunate than you. That's what I think is a meaningful life, living not for oneself, but for one's community. And that was from Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who passed away. And I just hope to live up to those standards because that has been my mantra, is to give back to the community. And everything that I do is predicated on what I hear from my constituents. So we might be successful in some areas, we might fail, but at least we tried. We were the man in the arena. So thank you, WATD. Thank you thank to my colleagues that are running. And, thank uh, thank you very much, us. Greg Hanley. You've heard the three candidates here, Jared Valenzuela, Greg Hanley, Jack Reardon. I'm Christine James, your moderator. Kevin Tachi asking questions with me from Monday Night Talk, Charles Mathewson, Amy Leonard Timing, and Larry Nelson Engineering. And the folks from PAC-TV, thanks as always. Remember to tune in here on Election Night. We'll bring you all the information you, le you need. You're listening to 95.9 WATD-FM. Remember, if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Thanks for listening. Listening.